Welcome to the Presidential Car Museum, the first and only museum of official state cars in the country. The museum structure is a three-tiered building tilted to 60 degrees, signifying the three corners of the equilateral triangle of the Philippine flag. 8. The number of the rays of the Philippine flag's sun was also a dividing factor for most of the design elements of the building such as the grooves, column base, and others. It shows that the presidential cars housed in this museum were not only owned by presidents, they are owned by the populace who financed it via their taxes, the Filipino people. The President of the Philippines The President of the Philippines is the most powerful person in the country. The president is elected by citizens and tasked with leading the nation and its armed forces. The president has the power to enact policies that will affect change in our society. The existence of the office of the president is a clear expression of our will as a free nation, rooted in history and anchored in our constitution. The way with which we choose the president through a national election shows our resolve as a democratic state to make our voices heard and to direct our own destiny as a nation. Hence, it is appropriate that the president's car reflects the value his or her position holds. It should be the best in security, privacy, convenience, and luxury equal to the dignity of his office and the respect given to him by the nation and the international community. The requirements to transport the president safely to his destination continues through the years as the different threats to his security arise. The National Historical Commission of the Philippines the National Historical Commission of the Philippines has the mandate to maintain the collection of all the historic presidential cars as each one is part of Philippine history and cultural heritage. These cars, the earliest dating to 1924, have been carefully prepared and restored by the Commission since 2008. Each car has its own history reflecting the era from which it was manufactured and the personality of the president who used it in his or her official capacity. It is the aim of this museum to preserve these vintage and classic cars from posterity, as each vehicle provides an alternative perspective not only to the Philippine presidency, but also to the history of the country. Emilio Aguinaldo 1924 Packard Single Six Touring The country's first state vehicle was a horse-drawn carriage, where the elected president of the First Republic of the Philippines, Emilio Aguinaldo E. Fami, rode on the 23rd of January of 1899 on his inauguration. It is said to have been rented from the nearby Funeraria for the occasion. This car, however, was acquired by Aguinaldo way after his presidential tenure. Prior to his death in 1964, President Aguinaldo donated the Cowit estate, including the Packard, to the National Historical Commission. The American-built car was among the top luxury markets at the time. It offered seating for seven, along with lashings of wood and vinyl. Manuel L. Quezon 1937 Chrysler Airflow Custom Imperial CW This car is the rarest in this car collection. Shuttling Manuel L. Quezon around the country was this car, said to be the most aerodynamic car of its era. With under 30,000 sold throughout the four years that it was in production, the airflow was a rare sight when it was new and more so in this country. The only time one will see the airflow on the road is when President Quezon had official functions. 
No other Chrysler airflow model of any grade was said to have been imported into the country. It was turned over by the Quezon City government to the NHCP on the 1st of August, 1979. Jose P. Laurel and Sergio Osmeña 1942 Packard Custom Super 8 180 Limousine During the Japanese occupation of the Philippines, the Japanese administration reorganized government and inaugurated the Second Republic of the Philippines in 1943, upon which Jose P. Laurel was elected as president under duress. At the time, he was accorded the 1942 Packard Custom Super 8 180 limousine. The Packard 180 was first introduced in 1940 and was aimed at the upper crust of society and, perhaps unsurprisingly, heads of state. It featured fine interior detailing with the best fabrics, leather, and carpeting available and boasted of a special wool ceiling. This limousine model has a glass partition that could be lowered if it was to be driven by the owner so as not to appear as a chauffeur. Sergio Osmeña assumed the presidency of the government in exile after Quezon's death in 1944. He served as the country's fourth president for the next two years. When the government was re-established in Manila in 1945, right before the Second World War ended, the war brought great destruction upon the country. Manila became the second most damaged Allied capital in the war. As the country recovered, a new presidential state car was the least of the administration's concerns. As such, his official state vehicle was the same 1942 Packard Custom Super 8 180 limousine used by his predecessor, Jose P. Laurel. It was found safely hidden in Malacanian Palace, one of the surviving buildings that escaped the city's destruction in 1945. Manuel Rojas, 1947 Cadillac Fleetwood Series 75 Limousine During his presidency, Manuel Rojas was chauffeured around in a 1947 Cadillac Series 75 with a Fleetwood body. The plush Cadillac was among the top luxury cars of its time and was designed to serve higher echelons of society. In the past, the buyers of the Cadillac Series 75 could avail of bodies made by either Fisher or Fleetwood, both of which were automobile coach builders. Fleetwood bodies were manufactured according to the customer's specifications, then sent by rail to Cadillac factories where assembly was completed. The Fleetwood Series 75 was distinguished by massive vertical grille that stretched out to the fenders, topped by an alligator hood. This was the final year that spare tires were mounted on the side fenders for decorative purposes. The president could also enjoy the car's accommodations with vast amounts of space, top-notch materials, and the best creature comforts of its era. El Pidio Quirino 1953 Chrysler Crown Imperial Limousine when President Manuel Rojas suddenly died of a heart attack on the 17th of April, 1948. As Vice President, Elpidio Quirino assumed the position becoming the sixth president of the Philippines. He became president again in 1949 when he won the election. The Imperial Line was Chrysler's luxury brand that was positioned against Cadillac, Lincoln, and Packard. It was marketed above the standard Chrysler New Yorker sedan. Imperials with the crown in their name bore the top of the line trim. This vehicle was a special long wheelbase version that offered seating for eight, along with a partition window that separated the driver's quarters from the rear passengers. Ramon Magsaysay 1955 Cadillac Series 7523 As a populist leader, 
Ramon Magsaysay was the seventh president of the Philippines from 1953 until his term ended abruptly in 1957 when his plane crashed in Cebu. Popularly known as My Guy, Magsaysay captured the minds and hearts of the Filipino people, especially when he opened the Malacanang Palace to ordinary people for the first time. Ramon Magsaysay would come a long way from his release jeep when he was defense secretary to using a presidential limousine. While he continued to use his predecessor's crown imperial, another vehicle on reserve was the 1955 Cadillac Series 7523. Naturally, the vehicle was optioned in the top of the line Fleetwood limousine trim, a precursor to the Fleetwood sedan that would succeed it. The Series 75 was truly a regal offering, nicknamed the High Headroom Car, capable of seating eight passengers with a driver's partition. The car was used as an auxiliary or reserved vehicle until the first term of President Marcos. It too was a popular state car choice with Chiang Kai-shek owning a similar model. It continues to impress today serving as one of the best examples of Series 7523 in the world. Diosdado Makapagal 1959 Cadillac Sedan de Ville Diosdado Makapagal continued the tradition of Cadillacs with his car of choice, the 1959 Cadillac Sedan de Ville. The first-generation Cadillac Sedan de Ville was only made from 1959 to 1960, and the 1959 model, as seen here, came with unique styling details that can only be seen for that year. The de Ville boasted of a pillarless hardtop body style, even in four-door sedan form. Space travel and science fantasy served as an inspiration for the vehicle's designers, which account for the rocket ship styling and many wings present on the vehicle. There are just over 20,000 of these cars worldwide, and less than 100 were officially earmarked and built for export. Not surprisingly, the Cadillac DeVille is also a favorite of Hollywood, boasting of starring roles in movies like 3,000 Miles to Graceland, Pink Cadillac, and as the iconic car of the original Ghostbusters, albeit in station wagon form. Ferdinand E. Marcos 1980, Lincoln Continental Mark VI Signature Series The affluent President Ferdinand E. Marcos would not follow the General Motors trend with his choice of a Lincoln Town Car Signature Series limousine. Though officially named Town Car, it is often still referred to as a Continental. Marcus's Lincoln is an early 80s model, as evidenced by the presence of the Town Car script above the headlight, which was discontinued in 84. In spite its classical styling, Lincoln Town Car Signature Series vehicles were easily distinguished by their vinyl coach roof, meant to recreate the look of a convertible. The vehicle's regal appearance made it a favorite for stretch custom work, and thus a favorite for celebrities and men of power. This pinnacle model helped Ford gain back ground in the luxury segment from loss to its contemporaries Chrysler and Cadillac in the previous decades. The interior features blue and gray velour complemented by wood and chrome trim. It also has a unique embossing in the seats part of the limited and luxurious Lincoln Signature Series line. Even in the 1980s, this vehicle had high-tech features such as keyless entry and the digital gauge cluster with a full-function trip computer. Its displays showed driver miles to empty plus an estimated time of arrival read out. Corazon C. Aquino 1986 Mercedes-Benz 500 SEL The Aquino administration was marked by a radical departure from the luxurious ways of the past administration. As such, the president opted for just a 500 SEL instead of the top-spec 560 SEL. Corey's 500 SEL was one of two donated by the German government 
who were overwhelmingly in awe of the People Power Bloodless Revolution and had donated a pair of W126 S-Class sedans in support of the government. This prudence is also reflected in the interior with simple vinyl and velour interior upholstery, just like most Mitzbeck S-Classes. Nonetheless, it did not scrimp on security, being the first official state car to feature bulletproof panels and windows with glass measuring almost two inches in thickness. The levels of protection were unheard of in the 80s and even featured fixed rear windows to ensure the rigidity of the class in case of an assault rifle attack. After Aquino's term, Fidel V. Ramos would use the second of the two vehicles. Fidel V. Ramos 1986 Mercedes-Benz 500 SEL Guard Elected in 1992 as the President of the Philippines, Fidel V. Ramos chose the Mercedes-Benz 500 SEL Guard. This particular car was not as heavily armored than the S-Class car of the previous president, but the Ramos State Car was the first production armored car from Mercedes-Benz known as the S-Class Guard. The Mercedes-Benz 500 SEL Guard was used by Germany's counter-terrorism unit, the GSG-9. It comes with thinner bulletproof glass, ballistic panels, and a special switchboard exclusive to S-Class Guard models. It houses the controls for lights and sirens, as well as a check button for the control modules and fuses. Joseph Ejercito Estrada 1993 Mercedes-Benz S600 Former actor and elected president Joseph Ejercito Estrada followed his predecessors when acquired a 1993 Mercedes-Benz S600 as official state car. At this time, armoring technology had made significant technological advances. Like Estrada's predecessor, this vehicle is from Mercedes-Benz's factory-made line of specially armored vehicles called S-Guard. Armoring for this particular S-Class has been leveled up, featuring even thicker steel plates in the doors along with Kevlar, the same material used in bulletproof vests. Modifications to the vehicle allow it to withstand small arms fire and certain explosive devices. It is fitted with a self-sealing fuel tank and an alarm system. Discretion is also part of the vehicle, with a distinct lack of badging other than the Mercedes-Benz logo. Another switch activates the flagstaff lights, illuminating the Philippine flag at night. At the back, a television and telephone is installed. Apart from the presidential seal, the rear quarters are standard S-Class fare. This car was sourced from the U.S. as evidenced by its amber corner lights, imperial measurements in the instrument panel, and an emission control plate found near the radiator shroud. This series marked a change in Mercedes's naming system, with the class preceding the engine size. The W140 also introduced innovations such as double-pane window glazing, power-assisted closing for doors and trunk lid, anti-pinch electric windows, rear parking markers which rose from the rear wings, and the climate system that could run with the engine off. Gloria Macapagal Arroyo 1993 Mercedes-Benz S600 Limousine B140 Gloria Macapagal Arroyo used one of the country's largest state vehicles. Arroyo's means of transport was a stretched 1993 S600 Pullman Guard. This model is 45 centimeters longer than the standard model and also has a higher roof and taller rear window with a more vertical rake. This limousine is by far the most heavily armored car in the collection. It was also armored by U.S.-based firm O'Gara and Hess. It features four layers of thick laminated glass with extra reinforcements made to the middle window. These one-inch thick panels of glass feature special films in between, capable of catching small and large arms rounds and dispersing the impact without letting the bullet through. Thick ballistic panels with Kevlar and steel plates line the body panels and door pillars. 
It also has run flat tires and engine block protection from sniper fire. Opening the doors of this limousine was quite a chore and it closes with a bolt like thump. Inside, it has luxurious features matching the Rolls Royce Phantom 5. The interior is trimmed in tan leather while the division window makes a return for the stretched S class. The extra seats also face towards the president and the rear quarters come with a TV and VHS player housed in a cabinet. On the side where the president would have been seated, it comes with a special set of switches so she herself can control air conditioning, heater, driver partition, sunroof, intercom and map lights. Meanwhile, on the left-hand rear door, an armrest hides a hidden gun compartment. Special Historic Vehicles Aside from these presidential cars, the museum also houses special historic vehicles which include a turn-of-the-century carriage and a World War II-era jeepney. Imelda Marcos 1960 Rolls-Royce Phantom V The car of Imelda Marcos as First Lady was the only car of its time that competed with the presidential car in terms of stature and opulence. While Ferdinand Marcos was chauffeured in the Lincoln, Imelda was wafted in a 1960s Rolls-Royce Phantom V. During this era, Rolls-Royce bodies were made by famous coach builders H.J. Mulliner, Park Ward, and James Young. As with all Rolls-Royce, its interior gets generous appliques of wood, leather, steel, and wool, and very little plastic makes its way in the cabin. It also signaled the return of the partition window. At the back, it comes with a special cabinet that stores wine or champagne bottles and a set of four crystal champagne flutes in case the first lady or her guests are in the mood for a drink. There's also a built-in humidor for the finest selection of Cuban cigars. The Phantom V was a luxurious car favorite, counting Queen Elizabeth II, the governor of Hong Kong, Mohammad Reza Pahlavi, the Shah of Iran, King Olaf V of Norway, Yugoslav President Josip Broz Tito and John Lennon as its esteemed clientele. In history, a total of 516 Phantom Fives were made. Leon Apacible 1940s Manila Carriage before cars became popular in the Philippines, the common mode of transportation was the kalesa. This particular kalesa was used by Leon Apacible in the early part of the 20th century. He was one of the signatories of the Constitution of 1899 in Malolos. This carriage was used by his family up until the 1940s. This is evidenced by the plate with the year 1944. Together with the house, this calesa was donated by his granddaughter, Corazon Apacible Caniza, in 1977. Ramon Magsaysay 1943 Willis Jeep Easily the least luxurious, though no less important, is another car in the National Historical Commission's collection, Ramon Magsaysay's 1943 Willis Jeep. It was a standard-issue military jeep and served as his official car while he was the defense secretary. Besides the defense secretary, the jeep also counts General Douglas MacArthur as one of its previous owners, who would later give it as a gift to Magsaysay. Thankfully, this is one of the few willies not converted into public utility jeepneys after the departure of American troops. In fact, it still bears many of its military accoutrements such as the gas can and shovel most World War II service cars had, along with a collapsible radio antenna. The Willys Jeep is one of the earliest 4x4 vehicles and is the direct ancestor of the modern Jeep Wrangler Rubicon. The famous Land Rover Defender was first based on a Willys Jeep, modified to serve civilian needs. Douglas MacArthur 1934 Cadillac V16 Transformable Town Car Cabriolet 
This Cadillac B-16 was used by both General Douglas MacArthur and President Manuel Quezon. It was Quezon's first presidential car in 1935, until it was turned over to MacArthur in 1936 to honor him with his new title as Field Marshal of the Philippine Army. This V-16 has the body-style transformable town cabriolet, a variant of steel-roof limousine. The grill-mounted Philippine flag at the front is the first of the fender-mounted flags in Philippine presidential cars. The car was briefly used as a state car and was subsequently replaced with the newer yet equally rare Chrysler Airflow. Thank you for visiting the Presidential Car Museum. Hope to see you again.